I hope that we can make fish clubs cool again. Because, uh, <laughs> I'd love to see them be as popular as they, they were in your day because they've clearly helped you and, you know, uh, you've, you've accomplished so much. You were by far the most decorated uh, fish keeper I've ever met. And oh, I've been well, all over the world. plenty that have, have You're being humble. around here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, from what I've met, so... And uh, it's been a real pleasure just getting to hear you. I'm a, I'm a talker, and this is one of the first times I ever I knew when to shut up. So oh. <laughs> thank thank you for uh, teaching us today. Okay, Appreciate well, it, Dan. Thanks for visiting. I'm sorry that we just got back and that there's a lot of work to do in here to make it look pretty again. All right, I'll let you get back to it then. Yeah. The video you are about to watch is almost the sole reason that I came back from Ohio incredibly inspired, rejuvenated, and felt repurposed. Uh, the downside is Dan, that is in this video that we're documenting today, is very soft-spoken, and my microphone was like broken. I tried to fix the audio the best I could. The video gets better with time in terms of content and information. All I had to do was be quiet. I know that you guys like fish room tours. This is not really one of them. This is me just following him around and listening uh, to, to somebody with far more knowledge and experience than I have simply talk. And that's what we need to do more of, and that's what you guys are gonna get today. I'm very uh, excited to present you with uh, one of the, the, the fav my most favorite videos I've ever made. This is Aaron. Do you have more towels? Dad, <laughs> just fucking. Oh, oh, wow. oh, I just took, yeah, take them from the, take them from the, okay. oh, you have to keep, uh, the <laughs> so today we're going to tour some fish rooms and this is the first stop. Hi. Hi. I'm Joey. Hope you don't mind me yeah, filming. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. The, you know, you're wet. I mean, I usually have wet hands. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let me start yeah, definitely a fish room. The floor is wet. Let me, yeah, let me start over here. This is um, one of our first tanks. Um, that we've had. This one's probably 35 years old. Wow. And we probably had to change the water in it every five years. Oh, really? Because it's an ecosystem. Right now, it's not. And this is the new filter thing that he uses. It's a side filter. You've seen that done? Yeah. <laughs> the Hamburg Matten filter. Right, exactly. Yeah. No Those are really cool. Very useful, too. Yeah. And they only get better with time. The longer they're exactly. on the, the longer they're on the tank. I wouldn't have seen it there. I would have noticed it. It's blended in really well. Right, that's it. This one's good. The other thing is um, Dan's really a horticulture, so he does a lot of plants. Yeah, so I see that. He sells these units like this. So, yeah. so, so, you know, you like, know, like, you don't pick up a whole unit or deeply like, 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 A lot of times you want to buy them. Like, 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 wow. That is incredible. Very nice. And how often do you do water changes? Well, I said this has only been broken down every five years. Oh. Well, water changes. He does. What do you do for water changes? Well, there aren't really that many fish in there. There's yeah, you don't really have to do water changes on this tank. Maybe top it off. There are, I think, uh, five bettas in that tank. There's one there. Oh, yeah. Like a sorority. They're probably mostly females. Yeah, the plants look beautiful, too. Very nice. Um, how long has, do you remember the, the Matten filter being in the hobby for? Because this is a... Well, this is, this is one of the newer ones. This, uh, the, it's, the, it's been in the hobby since like the, the 1960s. Oh, wow. But it was popularized in Germany in the 70s. Yeah. And at that, in the 70s, I had it in most of my tanks. But... How long have you been in the hobby for? In the 70s. Oh. Well, I think the first time I ever went on a on a Everglades fish collecting trip was in 1955 with my great aunt. Oh, wow. Of course, I was only about 10, so I wasn't allowed to bring any of the fish home. <laughs> my aunt got to keep them all. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. So that's, this is how this thing works. It's a little different. Airlift and yeah. let me show you how it it's interesting to know how long they've been in the hobby. I knew they were in it for a while, but I've got videos on how to build them. Uh, I know they were they were popularized in nineteen seventy in in uh, Germany, but I worked at the old Cleveland Aquarium and they said actually in the professional end of aquarium keeping they had been around a lot longer than that. Oh wow. 
And I know like SeaWorld of Ohio had some. Well, this is what the organized hobby can do for you. Wow. Our culture of the year. In appreciation of speaking of salt. Senior Purse. Here we go. Wow. It's very cool. I don't have a single award. Oh yes I do. I got a I got a, I got an award for my channel. <laughs> a gold, a gold play button. <laughs> Yeah, but that's not an award. Everybody gets that. Oh, look at this tank. Oh, the better tank. Oh, man, you guys are going to love these fish rooms. Our uh, older brothers had a pet shop, and there were fish all over their house. Here, uh, let me show you how. Okay, this is, uh, this is just a siphon hose. And the nice thing about a a uh, matten filter is this protects you from sucking up fish. You just siphon from behind yeah, it. The water changes back there. Okay. Let me start that one. Just haven't had water changes too often. You are all matten filters, Dan. Seems like it. You know, it seems as though some of the uh, Aquarius that have been in the hobby for a very long time and or uh, know, uh, know what they're doing, they stick to what's this, always worked. This particular mat and filter here is about 30 years old. 30 years Over old. 30 years old. And are they air powered? They are, well they, this or one. Or a little pump. Uh, these are air powered. When I had a 520 gallon tank in the old house, uh, that one had a, was powered by a, 2,500 gallon per hour pond pump. Wow. Oh, and you did a matten filter in that too? Yeah. Wow. That's phenomenal. 520 gallon tank with a matten Yeah, that's... Well, it speaks volumes. For about 10 years I thought I should really change this <laughs> filter. <laughs> so I emptied the tank, pulled the filter out, and I go like, I don't remember it being this clean underneath here when I put it in. It was it just looked brand new. It was wow. crazy. Oh well, you can get them down there. Yeah, you 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 uh I think this no, I've I've seen a lot of Matten filters in, in uh in my travels and in, in hobbyist tanks and whatnot. There. But it's always the the um the generation before me. And then the yeah. new generation's all electronic and... This is another one that's 30 years old. That's a 30 year old filter. Yeah. You don't make them... There's no filters these days that last 30 years. You're lucky you get three out of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is a different kind of matte filter here. This tank is really, you know, been yeah. overfed for two months, so it might... Oh, when you guys went away. Cleaning to do. Yeah, you're catching up, eh? I heard that... Uh, I, I think you set aside six months of food and it was gone in a month or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. No, that'll do it. You know, she, you know, this time my granddaughter helped. Oh, okay. So I don't know if it had anything to do with it, but it's not. But fortunately, the fish didn't really seem to care much. It's very quiet in here for being an air powered fish room. Yeah, now what I do is I replace these mm -hmm. once in a while. Oh. Uh, there's one over there and one over here that's starting to get loud. Yeah. They Do still work. It probably still work for a couple of years. I just buy a new one that's quiet and put yeah. that one in the auction because someone yeah. else won't care whether it's loud or quiet. Yeah. yeah. There's another beta. Oh, wow. Oh, he's a pretty one. Or she. Is that what, uh, would you say your favorite fish are, the bettas? I bred bettas like at the old house and betta uh, Cochina and betta Splendens. I like the Cochina better because you can put three pairs together in the same tank. They're not really three pairs because the males pick a spot 
and they don't bother each other. But the females just go wherever they want to, wherever they feel like leaving some eggs somewhere, they leave some eggs somewhere. They don't <laughs> seem to really care which male happens to be available at that time. There's one of the dark frogs. Saw that your wife was saying she got just got into them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are, do you like them too? Yeah, they're neat. Yeah. Very interesting. Do you think your hobby would have not lasted this long had you, had your wife not been into it and then so supportive? Well, I, I mean, it's not very common I you see a, the couple. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it was started out her hobby, but I had already been exposed yeah, to it. And, a lot. And, and it seems to me as though you did yeah. really well with yeah, it. Well, here. <laughs> I think there's one that was 1970 somewhere here. Oh, let's see, 89, 77. Oh, the Cleveland Aquarium we Society. Service Award. Editors of the Wet Thumb. And there's more recent things. And then your Breeders and Award This is a point. club that used to exist. Swakel is a club that used to exist. It was a saltwater club in Akron. Okay. Wow. Oh. Somewhere over here is there's a plaque I think I have somewhere. From, uh, Might be one of the most decorated fish keepers I've met so far. And I've met quite a bit. I've been to a lot of, are, of fish rooms. Most of them didn't make it. They got rust, rusty or broken somewhere along the line. Yeah. Trying to find the one that's kind of... See how the axle else has got it. Oh, here it is. This is it. Oh. That's for... That's Master for, breeder. For spawning a loach. And you're like, what? Why are you giving me a plaque for spawning <laughs> one loach? And they go, well, that's the way the rules are written if you spawn a loach. And I go, but this is the easiest. This fish is easy to spawn. You, you think so? <laughs> with your, with your uh, experience and knowledge. Is it easy, though? How did you do it? Yeah, well, what you got to remember is they're, they, where do they come from? Mm -hmm. They're native all the way from Indonesia to, the, to Siberia. So they are sort of seasonal. So what you do is you take one of those tubs out here, like those black tubs, you put it out in the garage where it won't freeze solid. Mm -hmm. And you, and like we had a big old uh, a swamp oak tree in the backyard and squirrels liked to, to chop off the end of the leaves and throw this big ball of oak leaves at you. <laughs> So I would grab one or two of those, put it in there, set it out in the garage, and let them hibernate during the winter. In the spring, you put them in a, in a tank, and you put the leaves in there, too. And then they lay the eggs inside the leaves, and then you go like, oh, worms, nope. Baby loaches. Wow. And the, they would stay on there, and then they would disappear and you would see just a few babies. And so we had about, I would go downstairs and I would see about 50 babies, about two or three inches long, three inches. And uh, so I'd try to scoop some of them and they would disappear in the gravel and you'd chase them into the gravel and you probably didn't get those, but you got another, some others, because they're down in the gravel too. Jeez. They swim right through the gravel yeah. like like it's water. It, so it's definitely a complicated. Not complicated, but it's. You got to know a, it. A few facts. You got to know. Yeah, yeah. If you know that they like to spawn in the spring after they've had a cold period, mm -hmm. then you're going to be able to breed them. And they like to have those leaves because they can lay their eggs in them, and they're out of sight, and it gives something for the babies to chew on when they when they hatch. And that year, was the, was that the year you first accomplished Master Breeder? Mm. No, I think we were 
we were uh, first in like an OCA for several years. Oh, you did it with several clubs. Yes, <laughs> a multiple master breeder. Yeah, D well, did your points carry over? When you were born was eighty three, right? Yeah, yeah. In eighty three, I was president of OCA and Medina County Aquarium wow. Society. Yeah, it was the first year for both of them. Although they did have, they had groups before that weren't quite fish clubs, but mm -hmm. they wanted to become a fish club. So it was kind of interesting. i got to tell you, Dan, this is exactly why I wanted to start coming to clubs again and promoting you guys. And um, it's just, it's, it's a, we, this has to keep going. Well, you can see like some of these clubs just like this one and this one and, and uh, the saltwater club don't exist anymore. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. They just uh, didn't make it. And uh, uh, here's something that's sort of, this fish, this uh, basement had a bar when we bought the house. Oh, nice! I'd fit right in. <laughs> so we, but there was there the was saloon stools, doors, but it was so tight. Yeah. We got rid of the stools, so it's just basically an organizing. Yeah. There we go. So it's the mermaid bar now, and then this was somebody got really industrious. And oh. this was a crawl space. They decided to uh, dig it out. So now these are tanks that I use for slow entries. And then there's different fish stuff stored in these boxes. And it used to be marked. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. But this was. This is a map and filter that went all the way across that 175 that's taken down. Wow. That's a different way to do a map and filter. This is far more organized than my basement where, where I put all my extra stuff. Yeah. Getting labeled and everything. Interesting. Once was labeled. What's that? It once was labeled. Somehow the stuff that's in the box doesn't seem to match the label anymore. You know, it <laughs> gets mixed up. This on this is um, I can't even see that stuff that's coming off there. Mm -hmm. That was what tied them on. Oh, okay. It's organic. It's uh, the same thing. It's rattan, so it's rattan fiber. The same thing that this that this furniture is made from. Mm. And it sort of turns almost transparent, translucent. It look, yeah, it looks like the aquarium. roots. But then. It eventually rots away, and hopefully the roots have attached by then. And this 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 is a piece of driftwood, regular driftwood, but it has a it has a uh, hypertufa base. It's something that gardeners use outdoors for decoration, benches and pots and stuff. It works good in aquariums, and then. Were pretty well attached, but some of them are getting a little loose. Wow. And this is another one with the attached plants. So instead of gluing it or tying it on with um, sewing thread, which is very common. Sewing thread never rots, though. That's unless it's 100% cotton. Cotton, which yeah. No, but you can hardly can't find it, you know. This one is uh, resin. This was a water fountain that started to leak. So a lot of your plants don't even require substrate, it seems. So a lot of these don't. Yeah, these are Java fern, uh, Anubias. More Anubius. This one obviously came loose after messing with it. I have to tie it back on. 
This is African water fern, Bobitis. Yeah. Oh, the Bobitis. There are at least two species of this, maybe a third one. And uh, this one is this one's really well adapted to being underwater all the time. And the other one that you usually find in like the big box pet shops mm -hmm. is really easy to grow because it grows in the air. Oh, immersed, yeah. And when you when you put it in the aquarium, it'll stay alive for a long time. But but, it, but it'll eventually die. It, it it often dies. I've seen people that have been successful with it, which makes you wonder exactly what they have because it, what they're saying is um, the other species doesn't look exactly like it. Yeah, Possibly it's a hybrid. A lot of these, these are Anubias are nearly always hybrids anymore. I got I to gotta say, there doesn't seem to be a lot of high-tech equipment growing any of these. Uh, no, what, I did. what is your secret? There's got to be well, something going on in I here. I did have, I did try CO2. Okay. But the problem with CO2 is like, like it's beautiful. You get rid of all the algae, the plants grow like crazy. But then when you take them to the fish auctions or pet shops, nobody wants them because they go like, Oh, those are high-tech plants. I can't <laughs> keep them alive. <laughs> so everything you take in goes for a buck. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, if you raise plants and say low tech, then you can put you them do in the better. auctions. Yeah. That's what I buy. I, I get yeah. the Java for hands. So you would, you would classify everything in this tech low tech? It, everything in here is low tech. Some of it does a lot better high tech. Yeah. Just grows faster. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all grown low tech. Well, some plants like you don't dose the tank or do anything like yeah, that. I do, but I'm not going to. After they've got six months of fish food in. Yeah, that's true. Two months, and yeah. it's not going to be. They're not going to need any for a good while. This is a sword, and I don't know if you can see it. Yep. You look okay. at the base, see that circle? Okay. That's one of the filter circles from a canister filter. Oh. You cut a slot in it, you open it up like a mouth, stick the roots in, and uh, then the plant grows in it. And that is genius. So you're taking... Fish don't dig it up. Like a little... Uh, is it sponge? Yeah, it's sponge. Yeah, it's sponge, and you cut it's the whole the sponge, round sponge filter you see in a lot of canisters. Ah, so, and then you cut a hole in the center, bury that under the slot. substrate. Okay. Yeah, and you just cover it up just barely even or slight, slightly under the substrate uh, to get the plant growing. Then uh, That's relatively you genius. Can, you can put some dirt and, and uh, ladder right there. Yeah. You can like work it in. You know, just put it in and hit this and use the sponge like you pretend you're cleaning the bucket until yeah. you get it loaded with dirt. And that will grow for a while, but eventually you resort to tucking stuff like this underneath. Oh. And it becomes these, even easier to these are cheaper. Those are cheaper? These are job spikes for ferns. Oh. And they're close to the same formula yeah. that, the, that the aquatic stuff is. But they're a lot cheaper. That's a plant I can't grow. The Valisaria. Yeah. Is that... It depends no. on your water. What do you... Do you what is, what's your water out of the tap like? Uh, seven something. Yeah, mine too. Seven six. It's, it should grow. Why don't you take a piece and see... Maybe I should try harder. I'll never get it over the border, Dan. I gotta go oh, back to Canada. Oh, that's right, Canada. <laughs> never mind. Yes, absolutely. You will never. Maybe get I could put it in my pocket or something. Be in just jail. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I forget about I'll that. I'll just give him your number. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to do that with that with that, with sponge. You know, um, to cut a slight a slot yeah, in about it. About a two inch slot, and, and stick the plant in. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's genius. Is that something that you you've 
figure it out on your own, or is that something you, you, you've seen over the years? It's something I used to do about uh, 50 years ago. 50 years ago. But then I put the, the foam all the way on the bottom. Oh, all the way. The original under gravel filters, if, if you've read any old Fish yep. Club magazines from the 1960s, yep. uh, Swash, you know, might even, Nancy Parker wrote an article on building under gravel filters before they were a commercial thing. Oh, yeah. In the 60s, it was strictly do it yourself. Yeah. And the under gravel filter was an under gravel filter. It was, it was a piece of foam on top of a plenum, a, gr a grate, bottom grate, mm -hmm. and then gravel on top of the of the foam to keep algae from growing on it. So it was a true under gravel filter. Everything you buy now labeled under gravel filter is a gravel filter because you're expecting the gravel to do the filtration. Oh, right. But that was foam, and I found that in spite of everybody saying, oh, plants won't grow on the under gravel filter, they just filled the foam with roots. The problem was, if you wanted to collect one... They'd pull the whole thing out. Well, no, you take a razor, you just cut around the plant. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And pull it out. Yeah. And then you hold it over another piece of foam, cut a replacement piece of foam just slightly bigger, and poke it in the hole. Oh. And that works really well until you start making it too patchwork. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's time for a new piece of foam, which at the time they made this water filtration foam in Columbus. And you could get it really cheap. And then you couldn't get it at all. And ironically, a, a Ohio State University professor from Switzerland moved in. And he could get it from Germany. Mm. So that was, that was when we started getting back in it. But in, in 83, they start coming out with wet dry filters, fluidized bed filters. And of course, I had to have all the new cool yeah, and stuff, you know. Is. So I kind of pretty much the fluidized filters got repopularized a little a couple of years ago, but I think they're going to die off again. They're died off for almost for sure now. Well, they're just they're they work. They're really they have a they have a good use. Yeah. If you're if you have a tank where you're constantly moving livestock in and out, mm -hmm. it's excellent. Yeah. If you have fry tanks, excellent because they will keep the nitrates and everything yeah. down really low and uh, you will get uh, a lot of growth from your animals. And here's some, I don't know if I have any of this sitting around or not, but cell pour what used to be a thing in the 80s. What was that called? Cell pour. Oh, okay. This is artificial. It's um, it's a biological media these days we it's, use it for. It's, well, it's a uh, ceramic. No, it's glass. Oh, it's glass. Wow. And it really worked very well because if you get the four-inch thick pieces, it mm -hmm. denitrates, and so the the nitrate disappears from your tank. You get little nitrogen bubbles that probably never see but the nitrates disappear so in this they stopped making in the 80s because it was very expensive and as you can see it never wore out mm -hmm. although some of it some of it i threw away recently because it was about 40 years old and it was starting to deteriorate yeah that's it's impressive that it's lasted that long, though. Do, did I see the axolotls? You have axolotls down here. Yeah, yeah. The these are these are these Iberian are rib newts. Oh, these are newts. And the they look very similar to axolotls because they stay 
Is the axolotl in here, Dan? No. Where is it? Yeah, and put it in the opposite end in the little 10-gallon tank by itself. I guess she decided to Where's the one that's done there by Rory's? Rory's is right here. Well, show me it's on this side. Oh, that one's right there. Oh yeah, there's some down here. Yes, but this is the axolotl. These are actually salamanders. These are axolotls. What got you into axolotls? And here's a, this is the rib newt. They're called rib newts because they have little, mm -hmm. sort of like thorns growing out on their outside of their ribs. So if a predator tries to bite them, he gets Stop. Yeah, it gets stung a little bit. Are they venomous? No. 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 Well, poison dart frogs are. Salamanders well, are. Well, not in captivity. Yeah. You know what, Dan? They, he has to go because. Okay. Well, well then we will let him go. Well, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna plate you a piece of cheesecake tonight. I would love it. Strawberries on that. Sure. Fresh strawberries. You put it in a go. container. Dan, I wanted to thank you for your time, my friend. Okay. Um, I, I would love to. Uh, I would love to help you in any way I can. Do you, do you want to? Do you, do you want to? Um, for the people that probably are enjoying this conversation, uh, is there anything you'd like to promote or leave them with a message of something? Or, well, I guess we've been involved in the hobby for a long time, and the clubs have made it fun. Got to edit newsletters when there were such things. I guess your technique kind of replaces newsletters in a way. Well, I hope that. Um, I hope that we can make fish clubs cool again. As, uh, I'd love to see them be as popular as they they were in your day because they've clearly helped you, and you know uh, you've you've accomplished so much. You were by far the most decorated uh, fish keeper I've ever met, and oh, I've been all over the world. Plenty that have. have You're being humble. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, from what I've met, so, and uh, it's been a real pleasure just getting to hear you. I'm a, I'm a talker. And this is one of the first times I ever, I knew when to shut up. So, oh. <laughs> thank, thank you for uh, teaching us today. Okay, Appreciate well, it, Dan. Thanks for visiting. I'm sorry that we just got back and that there was a lot of work to do in here to make it look pretty again. All right. I'll let you get back to it then. Yeah. Awesome.